I tell you, the world is flat, and that's that. It's round as your hat. It's flat as your head. It's round. It's flat. It's a round, round world. It's a round, round world. I contend it's round and it's going to be found when all the results are in. It's a round world now and it's always been. If only today's opposite views of the world could be argued the way it was in the time of Christopher Columbus, at, at least as imagined in the old comedy record, Stan Freeberg presents the United States of America. But despite the actual discovery by Columbus in 1492, the birth certificate of our land says America. That's the designation on a 1507 map on display at the Library of Congress in Washington, created by young clerics in the French cathedral village of saint dié who credit the explorer Amerigo Vespucci. The map also shows an accurate outline of South America before any of the later Spanish or Portuguese voyages there, and the Pacific Ocean before Balboa sighting six years later. The map's mysteries may never be fully solved, but we wouldn't have them to ponder at all if not for its salvation by a 16th century globe maker named Johannes Schoner, another Catholic cleric, later turned Protestant, collecting a wife and three children in the process. Not a major inventor or theorist, he was what the Internet today might term an aggregator of others' scientific thinking and creations, preserving them for later generations of innovators. His story is told in an extensively illustrated new book by Library of Congress curator John Hessler, A Renaissance Globemaker's Toolbox, Johannes Schoner, and the Revolution of Modern Science, 1475 to 1550, from the Library of Congress Press. And for your ears only, John Hessler joins us now. Welcome to the program. No, thanks for having me. Do we know if it was ignorance of Columbus or some prejudice for Vespucci that led the 1507 mapmakers to choose the name America? Well, it really is a complicated question, and it's just one of a series of uh, mysteries um, that the 1507 map presents to scholars and for people who look at it today. For people who haven't ever seen it, the map is, is huge. It's over eight feet wide and four feet high. And the, the real central mystery of the map is how did Waltzie Mueller, who was the main map maker, the person who's mostly credited with making the map, how did he get the information about the Pacific Ocean? How did he credit Vespucci um, with the naming of America and not Columbus? What sort of information did they actually have is, is an open question. Do we know when and how Schoner got his copy of the map, why and how he preserved it? Well, Schoner is an interesting character. Um, he probably got his copy of the map sometime after 1515. Uh, the copy that the Library of Congress has, which is the only surviving copy, um, is, was printed right around that period. And Schoner may have ordered it um, as a custom thing just for himself. At this period, he was really engaged in globe making. Um, his globes, the globes that he made, have a much more radical vision of the, the continents than, than even Walt Mueller put down. And how did the map make its way through the centuries to Washington? Um, anytime he sort of finished with some of the scientific things that he collected, the stuff that he read, manuscripts, maps, um, all sorts of paraphernalia that were related to mathematics and science, he bound them into very, very heavy books with, with oak um, uh, covers, very thick oak covers. Um, they look typically like your normal medieval book would look like. Um, and basically after Schoner died, um, his library was sort of handed down through several families, and his entire library was purchased by Ferdinand III, and most of it was transferred to the National Library of Austria. But the one volume that, that contained the 1507 maps, the thing that we term the Bond, which is just German for gathering, because the book has a whole bunch of other things in it, somehow got lost or somehow got separated from the rest of the library and made its way into a, a small castle in Germany, and was rediscovered in 1901 by a Jesuit priest who was actually doing research on Norse voyages. And from that period on, um, off and on, the Library of Congress had wanted to purchase the map simply because it did have the name America on. It's the first map that, that has the name America on, and it's sort of been termed since that period as the birth certificate of America. Um, and so it made its way to the Library of Congress officially in 2003, um, when the library purchased it from the German prince who owned it and the castle. Clearly a pack rat of the highest order. Did Schoner have a philosophy or some certainty about the importance of the contents of his toolbox, as you call it? 
One of the things that is most amazing about Schoner is, is I think his forward vision on on what would be important to science later. He, he saved some of the most important manuscripts and, and other things related to science from other scientists, people like Reggio Montanus and Bruno Walter, and some of these mathematicians and astronomers that predate Columbus. And in some instances, these are the only manuscripts, copies that we have, are the ones that Schoner saved. One of the things that gives us some indication that he really did know that he was saving them is into some of these books, that these heavy oak books, he had a book plate produced. And you know, the book plate says that Schoner gives this to you posterity. As long it is, it, as it exists, there is a monument to his spirit. So he certainly knew what he was doing as far as saving these things. John Hessler is a curator at the Library of Congress, Geography and Map Division, and author of the new book, A Renaissance Globemaker's Toolbox, from the Library of Congress Press and Giles Limited of London. Step aside, pal, meet the new Big Jesus of this round, round world. And this has been for your ears only. <laughs>